Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser, and in this video I'm going to be showing how to run Spring Boot in IntelliJ, setting up a very basic REST API project. So, to begin with, you can find information at uh, spring.io and find out all information about Spring Boot, but let's just jump into it with a brand new project. So I'm going to call this one Pledge Tracker. Uh, it's going to be carried on in the next video, which is actually from earlier, that happens to uh, talk about um, what we can do once we've created our, our system. Um, so inside of IntelliJ, this is the 2023 edition, 2022 edition, whatever, um, I'm going to say new project, and then here I want to say it's a Java project with a Gradle build system. Uh, selecting the JDK, I'm using 17, uh, I think anything newer than 17 would be fine. I'm going to use Groovy, and then I'm going to add some sample code. I don't really need that, but it kind of makes it nice to just what it creates. So I'm going to create this project, and let me pull that window onto the screen here, and then resize it to just the right way. Is that going to work? Hello, Lewis. Okay, so with my project, I now want to go through creating all that I need to to get this uh, get the Spring Boot application up and running. The first thing I need to do is edit the uh, Gradle file, build.gradle. So here we can see on the left hand side all of the files it's got, and build.gradle is the one I need. So I'm going to go into that. Uh, this is the Gradle build script, and I want to add in some plugins. I want to um, add some dependencies as well. So I'm going to copy from off screen here a pre-built one, overwriting what's here. I'll show you what I've got. The link to the project will be down uh, at the bottom of this video so you can find the full code if you like. But basically we've added in these two plugins and then we're setting up these dependencies uh, for Spring Boot. All right, now that I've done that, I need to synchronize the project with the Gradle build script. If I don't do that, then IntelliJ hasn't really updated from this. So it's giving me this helpful option here. So I'll load project from Gradle. It'll do that. If it's the first time you've run it, it may then run through quite a few other options about downloading files and a few things like that. I'm going to open up under source main Java. Here's my main. And I'm going to run this. This is the provided code. It's just This isn't really a boot, uh, Spring Boot, but I can prove that my project builds and runs. And there it says, hello world. OK, so that's a good first step. So now let's write a Spring Boot application. Um, instead of this org.example, I'm going to create my own package, new package. And let's call this one, um, <clears throat> oh, let's go, what do I call it here? Uh, so ca.myapp.application, uh, or myapp, so that'll do. And then I'm going to create a new Java class inside of it called application. And now I'm going to put in my main, so public static void main, and it takes an argument, a string array. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to pass this all off to Spring Boot to let it do the heavy lifting for me. So I can do this using the Spring Application class. Spring Application class, there we go. And I'm going to call its run method, a static method, and I need to pass in what class to run. Well, I'm going to run myself. I'm the, uh, the, the first the launch point. So this is application.class. That's the current class I'm in, and I'm going to pass in all the args. There's one last thing I need to do, and that's give us an annotation to tell it that this is a Spring Boot application. Spring Boot application. And I'm hitting enter on all the select options there. And so now I can run this code, and we'll see what happens down here at the bottom. It's going to completely change how, what it does when it runs. So Control shift f 10 to run the current currently selected file. And here, mm, this is interesting, it told me it can't do this. Why? I'll click on here on the left-hand side, so I'm on the Run tab. I see one, it gives me a random error. Go to the next one, application.main. If I scroll up, it tells me uh, web server start failed. Port 8080 was already in use. Yeah, I see one of my other uh, instances of IntelliJ was up and running and having that, so I'm going to do it again. I've closed that. I've stopped the debugger in the other tab, and now my program is running, and we see here that Spring Boot has launched. Now, if I go into my web browser, we can tell where it is. This is on port 8080. was the default port for this. So I go to my, my web browser here, and I'm going to go to uh, localhost 8080. And at the moment, it just says there's a generic error, 
basically it's got nothing it can do for me. All right, so that's fine so far. Let's go back to my uh, Spring Boot. We want to make a REST API. So we're going to create a new package here on the left-hand side, new package. And I'm going to call this package controllers. Inside of controllers, I'm going to create a new Java class to kind of uh, bundle up a bunch of my controllers. And this one, I'm just going to call a pledge, uh, pledge controller. It's a class. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I want to uh, mention that this is a REST controller. So I can say here, REST controller using an annotation for Spring Boot. And then I'm going to want to write some code that's going to handle the different endpoints. So the way I do this, let's first write the, the, uh, the function. So public, let's return a string, and let's call this one uh, get hello message. And it's going to return something like hello world from spring. Now, on its own, this is just a standard Java method. I want to now tell um, uh, Spring Boot that this should be doing something more interesting, that this is actually an endpoint. So I put here the annotation get mapping. So I'm mapping this to a get request. And then I specify what relative URL should be used for this get request. Let's map it to hello. So now I've got this uh, function. The name of the function is virtually irrelevant. It's like a comment to the programmers saying what it's going to do. So name it well, because you're going to care about it later. All right, so let's go back to my run tab. I'm currently running my project. I'm going to, let's go back to the front here. I'm going to stop that on the left hand side. Wait till it shuts down. All right. And then I'm going to rerun. So run. Runs the program. It's up and running. I'm going to go back to my web browser. Under localhost, I can now say, say slash hello, and it executes the get command. And if I hit F, uh, is it F11? Edge tools, or open dev tools. That's what I want. And then I want to see the network activity. I'm going to re execute this command, and we can see that it has asked for hello. And we can see all the information about it. Hello, we got a status code 200, meaning it succeeded. And if we go down, you can see all the different information that the browser sent and what we sent back. We sent back very little, but that's fine. Uh, the other way I can view this is I can use uh, either um, the Postman or I can use uh, curl. So let's use curl first. It's easy to do. I'm going to say curl uh, minus i for getting headers, x. And uh, for that, and then get local host, and then I want to say 8080 slash hello. And it'll execute the command, and we can see here the full response coming back from my web server. So all of this was the header information, and then the one piece of info, uh, text. Uh, and the last thing I want to show is what we, or for viewing this, is I'll show you how you can use Postman to do the same thing. I've got a full video on how to use Postman, you can see the link below. But as a brief tour, I've launched Postman. I'm going to say here, HTTP request. I'm going to give it a URL, so localhost colon, uh, colon 8080, one colon only, slash hello. I'll execute that, and it gives us back the data that we're looking for. And I can scroll through looking at the other aspects of this, looking at, for example, um, yeah, anything else it sent back, like the headers and so forth. All right, so that's how I can look at what's being passed back to me by Spring Boot. The, the next thing I want to show is just what I can do with that, with, a, um, with this basic uh, REST API up and running now. The one other thing is putting a web page on that. I'm going to go ahead and delete this sample code because we don't need that anymore, the org one. Oops, delete that as well. Good. Um, so the last thing is this public folder. Anything that goes inside the root directories public folder, new project, and I'm going to say here uh, directory, and this is going to be called public, all lowercase is good. I can now create in here a new file. I'm going to call this one index.html. Index.html is the default file that's going to be loaded. And I've got here a very trivial HTML file. So we'll save that in here. So we've got this one index.html. So now I'm going to stop the server. 
I do need to stop it and restart it uh, the first time so that um, Tomcat, which is the web server built into Spring Boot that's using here, uh, so that it finds the file again and looks for it. The REST API is unchanged. So, oops, no, I don't want to search for that. Uh, there we go. The REST API is unchanged, so it's still doing the same thing as before. I'm going to create a new tab here, and I'm going to uh, just load the root. So I'm loading the root folder, and it looks up the index. And so here we have hello world from the HTML, which is what I had inside my HTML folder. I could now start to edit this, put a much more interesting web page with more HTML files, CSS, JavaScript, using some sort of framework like Vue, React, or whatever. And it would all serve up from here giving me a nice, powerful interface on the website that I can interact with my um, system through. All right, uh, so that's it I want to show here. Thank you very much. Have a look at the link below for the next part of this video se series that will show you how to use this basic project setup, doing some more interesting things with this controller using the different uh, HTTP methods. Or also look down below for a link to the uh, uh, Postman tutorial uh, to walk through some of the things you can do with that. Thank you for viewing and have a great day.